Senator Griff. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President. Child exploitation is a global problem heightened by modern technology and the myriad of platforms that are used to access such material. Only last week, the heads of the three law enforcement agencies addressed the National Press Club warning of the problems Australia is trying to fight in respect to online child exploitation. And the Prime Minister said he would kick down doors to save an abused child. As legislators, we have a critical role to play in stamping it out. There is much more to be done and areas where we need to focus more attention, such as the child abuse material that comes into Australia via Japanese anime and manga. Anime is the style of Japanese animation and manga is the graphic novels which serve as the basis for anime. They both share a unique visual style and they are popular the world over, especially amongst teenagers. There is unfortunately a dark side and a disgusting side to anime and manga, with a significant proportion of the two media featuring child abuse material. They contain wide-eyed depictions of children, usually in school uniforms, engaged in explicit sexual activities and poses, and often being sexually abused. Experts that advocate against child exploitation have referred to this type of anime and manga as a gateway to the abuse of actual children. Experts also say that explicit anime and manga can be used by pedophiles as tools to groom children. It makes me sick to the stomach to even speak about this. Incredibly, in Japan, the definition of child abuse material specifically excludes child porn anime and manga, as these media don't include real children. Chako Eru which means erotically clothed, is a type of child exploitation material that features sexualised images of actual children and it remains legal in Japan as long as it doesn't involve full nudity. So sexualised images are legal, providing it doesn't involve full nudity. How does that work? Every expert combating child exploitation will tell you this is very wrong. At the time of the 2014 changes to child pornography laws in Japan, lobbyists on behalf of the Japan Cartoonists Association argued that a total ban on explicit content would damage the entire industry. Their argument was that imaginary images, unlike real child abuse, meant that no one was actually hurt. I don't buy that argument. Child pornography, even in animated form, is child abuse material. There is absolutely no question about it. And the law in Australia is very clear. The Commonwealth Criminal Code prohibits the sale, production, possession and distribution of offensive and abusive material that depicts a person or is a representation of a person who is or appears to be under 18. It is unambiguous. In 2015, the, US, oh, sorry, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Sale of Children, Child Prostitution and Child Pornography visited Japan and also declared this type of manga was child abuse material. The law in respect in Australia to child abuse is very different to Japan and for good reason. I was horrified to learn that this type of child abuse material is freely available in some of our country's most popular retail outlets, despite being a clear breach of the definition of child abuse material in both Commonwealth and state laws. My staff recently alerted me to a series that was distributed in Australia by Madman Entertainment called Sword Art Online. Sword Art Online appears in various media platforms from light novels, manga, anime and video games. The series takes place in the near future and focuses, focuses on protagonists Kiritu and Asuna as they play through virtual reality worlds. One particular episode, Sword Art Online Extra Edition, has an M classification which allows children under 15 to legally access the material. This classifi classification rating is advisory only and is described as having moderate impact with no legal restrictions. The movie undoubtedly features the abuse of children. In one explicit scene that takes place in the virtual world, the character Asuna is raped by her captor, Sugu, who threatens to also rape her in the real world. 
where she is lying in a hospital room in a catonic state. He also states he'll make a recording of the virtual rape to shame her as well. And the rape, incredibly, is referred to as a fun party. Asuna is chained and her clothes are ripped from her while Kiritu is forced to witness the rape. Asuna is described as a 17-year-old girl. In another scene, high school girls are at a swimming pool where one of the girls indecently assaults another character by repeatedly squeezing her breasts and bullies her because of her physicality. The classification board's decision report for this movie justifies the M rating by saying the nudity through the film is moderate in impact and justified by context. How can the sexual assault of a child, even in animation, be justified by context? Further research by my staff uncovered another series called No Game, No Life. This series is hypersexualized and features incest themes between the two main characters, brother and sister, Sora and Shiro. The Classifications Board decision report for No Game, No Life states, and I quote, Throughout the material, the female characters are frequently depicted in sequences that feature panning visuals of or close focus on their crotches, breasts, legs and or buttocks, end of quote. They are describing images of children. These images are in contravention of the law, plain and simple. The worst anime my office discovered is Aramanga Sensei. The plot is beyond what any person would consider as normal or appropriate. The series features 12-year-old Sagiri, who draws pornographic manga while her 15-year-old stepbrother writes the books. Revealing clothing and sexually provocative poses are frequently depicted throughout the series, with the characters seen copying these poses and referring to genitalia. The series also heavily features incest themes, and many scenes are so disturbing, I just, won't, I just can't describe them. Whilst the series has a restricted MA15 plus classification, I say again that this falls within the definition of child abuse material contained in the Commonwealth Criminal Code and should be banned. It beggars belief how it passed through the classification board who, in their decision report, provide justification for scenes including upskirting as comedic. There is nothing funny about it, it is repellent. The series should have been denied classification and should be banned. The classification board appears to be making decisions in isolation to criminal law. This must stop. There is also the issue of explicit manga graphic novels, which are not vetted at all by the classification board. Often the images they contain are more harrowing than anime. This must also change. The rape of children is abundant in manga, like the series Goblin Slayer, which I have to say in my office we showed to a number of people today and they were absolutely horrified. In Goblin Slayer, children are often portrayed as frightening or resisting but they are also shown as enjoying sexual abuse, enjoying it. And as I've said, experts say that pedophiles are using this material to groom children. Have a look at this. This is normal. It's certainly not normal. I've already made a submission to the review of Australian classification regulation currently underway to raise these issues, but we cannot wait for the review findings. We must act now. The Australian Federal Police have said that it does not condone any form of child exploitation or activity of any kind that reinforces the sexualisation of children. I agree, and I think they must look at this material urgently. I have written to the Minister of Home Affairs about the issue and to the Minister for Communication, Cyber Security and Arts, and I am calling for the immediate review of all Japanese anime movies currently accessible in Australia. I am also seeking the banning of particular titles I have referred to and indeed any other anime and manga featuring the abuse and exploitation of children very much as a matter of urgency. I have also written to the Japanese Justice Minister in relation to these issues. I express my hope that the Japanese government will open its eyes to the insidious effect of these materials and take action to put the best interests and safety of children above all. South Korea has managed to ban anime and manga of images of child sexual abuse. 
The safety and well-being of children in Australia must be a paramount consideration for all of us in Australia and across our borders. Senator Stoker.